I wanted to have the purest and the best voice I could with the voice I had because ever since I was four and I heard Sleeping Beauty sing Once Upon a Dream, I wanted to sing like her. Victoria Oruwari graduated from the most prestigious music school in England, Trinity College. Being blind, Victoria's opportunities for an opera career have been limited. She's been invited to New Zealand to sing at the Attitude Awards. There's so many, you know, disabled artists in the world that are really good and, you know, they have Stevie Wonder and they could have invited anyone and, and they picked me. Being out of London, it's, I mean, it, could, it could be really daunting. Victoria is about to get the complete Kiwi experience. It will be an adventure to hear, taste and feel. Right, I think it's getting serious now. There's no point in coming all the way if I'm not going to go back a different person. Or slightly to add, to add something new to all the bits and pieces that make up Victoria. to be here. I'm really excited. Finally, I'm in Auckland. This is Victoria's first time down under. She's brought her friend Patricia along to help her. It's always nice to have a nice pair of eyes when you're in a strange land. I'll keep her out of trouble. <laughs> well, she needs to keep me out of trouble as well. <laughs> I was expecting to come to a place where the culture will be totally alien to what I know and understand. Not too many cars yet. I'm surprised. Fresher than London, perhaps. Yeah, slightly fresher, because I'm just asking where the sheep are, because someone told me there were more sheep than people here. I didn't know how true it was. <laughs> Auckland, here I come! Yeah. Oh, Already, Victoria's found a duet partner, a local busker. to have opera on the street. Rehearsals for the awards have begun. Victoria's here to demonstrate her versatility. An opera aria, followed by a jazz standard, and then a pop song, a singer's triathlon. She's performing with the Navy Brass Band and backing singers. Yes, it's very complex in the sense that I have to start off by singing a classical aria, big classical aria, and then that would segue into a musical theatre song, which is quite jazzy and very, very belty. Yeah. How about that go again? And then I have to sing Aretha Franklin's Respect. Well, if anyone ever told me I would ever sing that, I would never have believed it. And I remember when I was asked to do it, I didn't even think. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do it. And then I went and listened to the track and I thought, oh, my word, how am I going to sing that? I'm going to wreck my voice. So I had to look for a backing track in the right key that wouldn't wreck my voice. And I kind of went and found the attitude, you know what I mean? Because you've got to get a bit Texan. And I can't do Texan very well, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that last yeah. Yeah, okay. one, two, three, four. Ooh. What you want? Ooh. You hear me? You don't come back home at five o'clock this morning, I'm gonna whip your ass. That's even ruder, <laughs> but I can't imagine anything. <laughs> Between rehearsals, Victoria's squeezing in being a tourist. We're taking her to Waiheke Island in the Hauraki Gulf. So, 
question? Please tell me there are rails at the edge all there around There are rails us. at the edge all around you, <laughs> okay. and there's a seat. <laughs> it was nice getting on the ferry. I was quite pleased that it wasn't too rocky when we were getting on. But when we got to the top, I felt really light because the wind was blowing so hard, and I thought, I'm literally going to fly. So I imagined that I was flying. Myself, but I couldn't you know like if I'm in this room and I decide oh, I want to sing something you can hear it kind of bounce to that wall or that wall or that wall but it was just going into nothingness and that wasn't very nice it felt like my voice was going away and never gonna come back throughout her visit Victoria is connecting with Kiwis who are vision impaired so there's another ramp to get us off but um, it's a bit uneven so there's a little step up Waiheke local Don McKenzie is picking up Victoria at the dock. He wants to show off his favourite parts of the island. Waiheke Island! <laughs> Don and Victoria have never met, and neither can see. Always tricky for a first encounter. When someone sighted meets you, they can see your face, and even though you can't see theirs, you can perceive theirs somehow. And there's kind of an you know, expression of whether they like you or they don't like you. I think it happens with blind people too, actually. Yeah. They kind of... You kind of take to someone or you actually don't take to, to the person. What about shaking hands? <laughs> That's the awkward one. I just always say, here's my hand, because... Um, or else you get other parts of your body grabbed. <laughs> and I hope that they find it. Or I start to go... If yeah. they don't. You probably have a white stick. Oh, that's a clue. That's someone with a guide dog. Oh, doggy dog. Cool. Do you think that's him? It might be. Should we approach him? <laughs> yeah. And say hi. 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 Hello. I'm um, Victoria. Hello, Victoria. I'm and Don. Hi. Nice Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. To meet you. And Don's taking Victoria to a little-known Waiheke treasure, Whittaker's Music Museum. Don's guide dog Holly has other ideas. In the door. In the door. Lloyd and Joan Whitaker are in their 80s and still enthusiastically growing their collection of antique instruments. They've assembled around 100 instruments. Some are more than 200 years old. Visitors are encouraged to have a go. Get the idea? Yeah. They're really interesting people. Like, they have this museum with so many interesting instruments. I don't know how they can sleep at night because I would just be on them 24-7. This is the modern piano. And then you've got the controls. To, you can make it go faster, slower, up, down. Mm -hmm. The key, two Victoria kittens. wants to use every chance she has to rehearse. I have felt like it was important that I sang well wherever I sang because obviously people have heard about me as a singer and I had to sing. I can smell, I can smell something. I don't know if it's the lavender. Don's showing off the yes. best the island offers the senses. And Waiheke is famous for producing boutique wines. And I think because he's visually impaired as well, he, he knows what he would want to see if he went to a place. The places he chose to, to take me to were, were really good because I would call them multi-sensory places. There are things you could hear, things you could feel, and yeah, things that you could see. <laughs> Tristan's a wine expert. He's lined up a selection of tastings. But he'll have his work cut out. Victoria admits she doesn't really like wine. Um, I don't really understand wines, and quite frankly, I don't think I've acquired the taste for them. I'm, I kind of drink them because it makes me look grown up. <laughs> but um, no, but I, I do like some wines, but they have to be sweet ones. And Sweeter wines. Oh, that's good. That gives me a good indication. This one, I think, got a lovely nose. You'll get more on the nose of this one. Give a good smell. It's quite happening. 
strong. Isn't it? Yeah, a little stronger. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. And why French? Most of the oak in the world uh, comes from France because they. Have... It's important to have an open mind when you travel because if you if you turn down everything, then you never know what you would have liked and what you wouldn't have liked. Mm -hmm. So this is the rosé for 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's three grapes. You can, it's, wow. um, so that's probably where you'll get the sweetness. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful cheese. Have that with some this cheese. This one. Yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic with cheese. And it matches you. Yeah, By far, they trying to smell it. Mm. You, smell you smell that? You smell like very, very faint lollipops. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Just trying mm. to think of what it reminds me of the taste. You've just created a new wine addict or wino. <laughs> <laughs> Another one joins the club. Huh? <laughs> Waiheke's highest point is just above the Mudbrick Vineyard. But for Victoria, the views come from her well-developed imagination. Yeah, because ironically, like, this spot we're standing on, lots of people will be taking lots of pictures saying, it's an amazing view. <laughs> well, it's good that we've got our spot here anyway. <laughs> we got to the top and I was like, oh, wow, nice top of a mountain. But what if some tigers and lions and bears just emerged? All I could imagine was lots and lots of trees around me. And where there are trees, I never feel safe because I've read lots of fairy tales and lots of books and you hear forests and animals just appear from nowhere. And I'm thinking, what are we gonna do if anything just came out <laughs> to get us? Dawn has one last adventure for Victoria. Oh God, we've just arrived at the Honorable Beach and I'm expected to put my feet in this water and I'm actually cold. <laughs> It's part of the Kiwi experience, and if I don't go in there barefoot and, and walk down, stop, stop, I'm gonna stop, fall. Stop. <laughs> Can I take off my shoes now? Uh, I, can't, I can't do it. to go but here I come can I pick up some shells yeah. oh this is nice sure. do you know if you put them in your ear you can hear something let's see what this one is saying uh, they need to be more curly I think yeah this one is not as curly as it could be um, is the sand white I'm not going to go further than this. It's actually, it's not too bad. Woo, it's nice. It's not too bad at all. It's actually not too bad. And I can stay for two more. Yay. I like that. Woo. Right, I think it's getting serious now. <laughs> gone into the water which is probably like below 20 degrees um, I would never do that normally <laughs> um, I know that was nice I can't wait to go back in again again come back Woo! right that's not funny anymore <laughs> today has been full of many new experiences I've been to taste some wine I'm now better educated about the sort of wine I like and I had lunch and I walked down a very steep hill in these! <laughs> then it's back to Auckland. Victoria's got an important dinner date. The Depar family are putting on a Kiwi summer feast. They've got the snarlers ready and the barbecues fired up beachside. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Hi. I'm Melanie. Oh, I'm nice to meet you, Melanie. How are you? Hi, Victoria. <laughs> I'm nice to meet you. I'm uh, Natalie's dad, that's here, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Richard, yeah. Richard, that's right, yeah. Here we go. Give us your hand here. Yeah. There's tongs. Okay. Oh, wow. There's the grill there, yeah. right? And then there's the sausage there. Like, pick it up. And, and no, well, you kind of got to turn it over because you're cooking, you know, you, you, you've got your cooking surface there, so you want to okay. turn it round and round and round. And oh, then... dear. How am I going to manage that? Hello, sausage. Don't hide from me. That's a good sausage. Oh, no, I can't. So I'll give you a hand. 
I, I, I want to try it. I get it. Uh, come on, sausage. Don't hide from me. I slip. Oh, yeah, you you're just about at it. Yes! And a turn. And a nice turn. Yay! And well done. Victoria's taking part in her first pofri tomorrow. She wants to be prepared. I was going to just teach you a, a kind of a nice, um, really cool waiata that you're just going to sing on Friday, which is going to okay. be cool. So, yeah, shall we? Yeah, so we can proceed yes. for my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> What's the title of the waiata I'm going to learn today? Okay, so the title of it is He Honore. So can you say that again? He Honore. He Honore. So pretty much it starts with that too. It goes, He Honore. So he honore he korore. Yeah. It's uh, so honor and glory. So do you want to just sing that through with me? Okay. So he honore. Victoria's got to quickly memorize the waiata. She can't refer to a sheet of lyrics. In Africa, if someone comes and they, see, they greet you in your own language, it's like they've cared enough to, to learn a little bit about you even before they met you. And I feel that it, it creates a sort of bond. Cultures are usually very strict, aren't they? Like, you know, don't talk like this to this person, don't shake that one with your left hand, don't sneeze. <laughs> um, and sometimes you, you could just get so caught up in all the things that you're afraid of, that you, you, you don't try something. But I think trying, the experience of trying, nothing beats that. Maybe I should wear something that makes me look younger, like a dress, <laughs> because no one tells children off when they get things wrong. The Pofri's at the Auckland Museum. Wow, so we're here now, mm. and I've talked the talk, and now I've got to walk the walk. Really scary. I know I was going on about wanting to participate and immerse myself into everything, but it's pretty scary now that I have to actually go through with it. Yeah. Now, you, you do have to put yourself on the line, and you could be laughed at, you could be yelled at, you could be, actually, even worse, ignored. <laughs> I like not being able to see what things really are like because then I can see what I want to see and I can decide that the world is more beautiful than it is and being a you know having lost my sight since I was like six and a half I still have a child's way of approaching things. I think I did imagine that they would wear like masquerade masks and things like that you know a mask made of some things from trees and Maybe paintings of bright colors like red and green and yellow.
going to the Blends school. Uh, I think it's a music school. I want to find out about these children's experiences because a lot of the time you find a lot of comfort from music because it's the one thing that you're doing that you don't need anybody else's help. But I think that's why a lot of people with disabilities turn into the art because um, they, they, they can express themselves in their own unique way doing art and it's the one place where they are autonomous. These students have travelled from all over the country to meet with Victoria. <laughs> Kia ora everyone. They have a surprise for her. They're performing a song Victoria wrote called Girl in the Corner. One, two, three, go! That was really nice. I was so happy to hear them singing my song and singing it with conviction, you know, because I, I it's part of my dream for my song, Girl in the Corner, to get lots of young people singing it. What I wanted to use this song to bring forward was the fact that, well, they are proud because they've got everything to be proud of and they should, they should be counted. Guys, um, I wanted to just have a talk with you about, well, let you guys have a talk with me about what life is like um, in school, in general, how you find getting around. What is the nicest thing about not being able to see? You get to read Braille and um, you have the memory. If you type something in Braille, yeah, and then and then um someone and then someone wants to know all your secrets, and but but they can't read Braille. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We all know and they don't know. <laughs> so can we go to what the things that are not so... Uh, can we go to the things that are not so nice about being blind? Sometimes um, at school you get bullied and, um, and you can tell... And when you're sighted you can see who's doing it and tell the teacher. Yes. The teacher will, will go and tell off that person. But when you're blind you can't see um, the, the new bulliers. And well done. You know, name. I was <laughs> waiting for someone to say that. Because a lot of people forget that when they, you know, when children go to school, horrible things happen to them. I think they're living the life that I lived, and it was like seeing a smaller version of myself, um, saying the same things that I would have said. But I am happy that they got to speak up in those interviews because it means that other people can can hear what the children are saying, and maybe, you know, by by some process of assimilation, things might change for them. One, two, three, and... I'm like the other boy in the corner. Oh, oh. Show me the respect to give the other. Oh, oh. I may not look like him or do my mambo like his own. But I'm just as exciting you Victoria has one last rehearsal before the Attitude Awards. She's a little nervous. One of the things that I have kept saying to you and everybody else today is about just finding that connection with the song yeah. and then finding the connection with the group because yeah. really it is this group thing. You yeah. are my diva and you are the diva of the night and that's fantastic but you also have to connect, connect. with the group and with the yeah. audience as well. I just worry that I, I just hope and pray that nothing actually goes wrong because um, 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 I worry about that every day because I'm just thinking we're working with a backing track and and live instruments at the same time and if anything kind of goes wrong it could be catastrophic because the track cannot be told to stop so there's so many different levels for her to go to and I really hope that she can do that in two days A big welcome to you all to Auckland's Viaduct Event Centre for the fifth annual Attitude Awards. 
London's Trinity College is the world's leading music school, and tonight we're delighted to bring you one of their star graduates, direct from London, Nigerian-born soprano Victoria Oruwari. stage and being around people because that way I feel like I'm giving something. My aim would be to use my music to make a very positive name for myself so that other people who have a similar disability or parents of children with a similar disability or with any disability, they can hear my music and say, well, look at Victoria, she did this, so my daughter can do the same or my son can do the same. <laughs> 